Can you hear me well? Yes. Cool. Welcome. Great to see you. Uh, how to be absolutely unstoppable when you do not feel like doing anything, especially in weather like this, terrible weather, then how do you motivate yourself, inspire yourself? Please read this article to learn more. Four types of hobbies you need to have and why you should have them. There are four types of hobbies to learn. Again, click on the article to read and learn more. How to design your day to create magic. And uh, my recent book, so I wanted to share this. Today's topic is creativity and design thinking. I want you to start looking at this chart. Which ones do you have? Which ones do you need to develop? Please look at the chart. These are the 21 skills that will pay you forever. Which ones are your strengths? Please choose your top three strengths. Which ones are your top three strengths? Write them down. Which ones are your top three strengths? Please write them down. And the next question is, which ones do you need to develop? Which ones are your weaknesses? Please also choose three of them that you need to develop. Which ones do you need to develop? Top three weaknesses, but you must develop them. Which ones are they? Please write them down. Wrap it up, please. In order to be successful, remember that we need to get out of our comfort zone into growth zone. That's our goal. The last one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ability to ask for help. Okay. Yeah, look again. So in order to be successful, you need to jump out of your comfort zone. What will you go into? Fear first. You need to go into the zone of fear. But then you need to continue on to the learning zone and then to the growth zone. It's a long journey. First, you need to embrace your fears and stress and anxiety because it is unknown. But you need to continue nevertheless as a hero to your journey to advance your learning and development. That's how you become a hero and that's how you become successful. When you are charting your learning journey, this is what not to do. Let's say, I need to commit to a system to organize all the bits and pieces of ideas and information so I can better use them when needed. So this is hard, time consuming. I need to. There is shame here. There is no accountability. There is no deadline. It is better to make it concrete. Instead of this, you need to say this. Ask myself what is my number one priority 
and reflect in my journal for 15 minutes when I may wake up in the morning by setting an alarm and putting the journal and the pen next to my bed. You see how much better this is? The second one? Like you need to be concrete when it comes to your actions. This is much more concrete. You start with a specific question. What is my number one priority in the morning? You set up an alarm clock. You reflect for 15 minutes. You write in your notebook. You make yourself accountable. You make your actions very clear, yeah? So that's how you need to act, build your system. I'll talk a little bit about these creative challenges. After your job application portfolio, you need to do these creative challenges, which are designed for you to do every week. Try to do these every week. But in your portfolio in summer, I want you to choose two of them, OK? To choose two of them, and you will be including them in your portfolio, OK? So let's go over them. I want you to go over them and then choose which ones are most exciting for you. Of course, by all means, you can do all of them each week. I designed this to unleash your creativity. If you do them all, you'll learn a lot. You'll have a lot of excitement in your life. You'll have a lot of success, yes? But if you want to choose two of them, to include in your portfolio, which are they? I want you to think about it. The first challenge, you can do these every week, okay? Challenge one, you will connect dots and storytelling. These are the words you will be using. Avocado, fashion, chaos, secret, magician, disgust, dancing, Caesar, spaceship, rivalry, avatar. So you will write a story using these words, all of these words. In your story, you will be connecting using all these words through your creative writing, okay? That's your challenge, number one. Uh, B, you will then illustrate this story. You can doodle, draw it, depict it. You can use storyboards, or you can uh, create a comic story. Uh, but you will be visualizing. You will be visualizing this in a uh, visual story or a storyboard, okay? So that's challenge number one. I want you to think, is this something that you would like to do? Yes, no, or maybe? You write one of these. Did you like this challenge? Yes, no, or maybe? Remember, out of these eight challenges, you will be choosing two of them to include in your portfolio. Whichever you choose, please make sure that you do them in all the details. For example, if you choose this challenge, you have to do both parts, okay? Like you have to do it in all the details, okay? So would you like to do this one? Please make your decision, yes, no, or maybe write it down. The second one, your secret gift. Eight day of the week. Imagine that you are given a secret day, eight day of the week. This call, this day will be your secret gift. But this cannot be just another day. You have to do something unusual, remarkable on this day. You can give a name, a new name to this day. It can be another name, another secret day. Okay? And then please respond to these three. A. How would you make this day memorable, creative, full of adventure? You can visualize this as well. B, create diff 20 different scenarios to make this day truly memorable, delightful. C, you will do an artist's way to get inspiration. You can see movies, do some artwork, attend some museums, go to cafes, engage in some hobbies, go to theater, etc. OK? So if you want to do this, uh, I, my question, do you want to do this? Yes, no, or maybe? Write it down again. If you do it, make sure you do all of it, OK? Would you like to do this one?
This can be your fun day. Secret day. Design that day. Okay? Let's continue to challenge three. The third challenge, you'll walk around the city of Norwich, Norwich downtown, with your camera, okay? And then you need cell phone and attentive eye. Pay attention to the doors of Norwich. This project is all about doors. You will take photos of 12 different doors around Norwich with your cell phone, okay? And then give them titles. What did you learn from taking these photos? What have you realized about doors? So spend time on doors all week. Go take pictures of doors, pay attention to doors, think about doors the whole week, okay? Can you expand your knowledge about doors? Doors and, let's say, humanity, doors and history, doors and your dreams, doors and uh, design. Doors and engineering, doors and history, etc. So think about doors and then B is imagine one of these doors open to your childhood, a childhood memory, a sweet memory. What do you remember? Where are you? What are you doing? Describe that memory, make it vivid, rich, and describe it and write it down. Okay, that's the challenge. Would you like to do this one? Doors challenge. Yes, no, or maybe. Challenge four, photographic treasure hunt. You will go on a photographic treasure hunt with your uh, camera or cell phone. You'll take eight pictures. What will you take photos? An animal in the clouds, a UEA bunny, spirals in nature, a plate of food uh, to make a portrait, etc. You see these goals, yeah? You will try to capture them in images. You will become a photographer. Okay? You'll create a gallery, and then you'll create a mood board, vision board, collage, artwork using these photos. Maybe create some mashups, artwork, poster, bringing them together. Okay? Would you like to do this? Yes, no, or maybe. If you love photography, you can easily do this. Try to choose something that you'll be excited by. Something exciting, okay? Challenge five. You will meet yourself who comes from a parallel universe. This is very exciting. You meet yourself, come across yourself in a cafe in London. You are astonished, you are shocked. You come together, you have a cup of coffee together, eat some cake together with yourself from the other parallel universe, okay? A. Write a long, detailed description of the other you who is living an alternative life in this other parallel universe. Think about you in a parallel universe, yeah? Describe that life. B, you will draw, doodle about that life, alternative life. And C, you'll imagine the conversation that you will have with yourself in this cafe. Write down that conversation. What would you talk about? Okay. Would you like to do this challenge? Yes, no, maybe. This is all about creativity, using your creativity and imagination. Challenge six. You will be writing three letters to yourself. The first letter, you'll write it imagining that you are 80 years old to your current self. You are writing a letter of, from your 80-year-old to your current self. The second letter, from 8-year-old self to your current self, your old child self, 
to your current self. And the third one, you'll write a letter to your future self using this website. And you'll get a screenshot of that letter. Okay, so you will be attaching, including all these three letters, if you choose this challenge. These letters should be detailed, imaginative, giving some life wisdom, advice. Okay? And you'll be using creative writing to do this. Would you like to do this challenge? Yes? No? Maybe. Write it down. Challenge seven, you'll be time traveling to year 2030. Imagine that you are into a time travel machine. You come across, go out of this machine. The year is 2030. What do you see? What do you witness? You'll be writing about the world, organizations, and work, your career. Where do you see yourself and your life? Where are you? What are you doing? So you'll imagine all these details, make it vivid, practice creative writing, and futuristic thinking to make some predictions, okay? And write them down. This is your future vision. Make it very detailed, vivid, descriptive. Would you like to do this challenge? Yes? No? Maybe. Challenge eight, the last one. These are six fantasy adventures. There are links to this challenge, but you'll be writing just one from each, okay? If you choose this challenge, you can click on the links to learn about the exercises, but the this idea is to write one story about each of them. So you'll be writing six stories in total, okay? The first story, you'll write an adventure set in virtual reality, metaverse. You'll be engaging in some adventures using your avatar. You are in the virtual world with your avatar. You are in the metaverse, okay? Write down some adventures in this virtual world, number one. Number two, You'll write an adventure set in outer space, maybe the solar system, Mars, or beyond the solar system, maybe another star system, in a starship. You are traveling somewhere, okay? Mm -hmm. Write down a science fiction story. The third one, you will be part of a fantasy universe, such as Harry Potter, let's say. If you set yourself as a character in Harry Potter, Imagine your character, rewrite that story. Or imagine that you are part of, let's say, Game of Thrones. What type of a character are you in Game of Thrones? Rewrite it. Okay? So you'll imagine yourself as part of one of these immersive worlds, fantasy worlds, and then write down your story. The next one, you'll go back to some part of human history such as the Roman Empire. Let's say you go back to Roman Empire or you go back to ancient Egypt. Imagine yourself there in ancient Egypt or ancient Rome. Write a story about that life. And the last one, you will set yourself in a completely different country and culture. Somewhere that you don't know anything at all an exotic or alien, some other culture. You are a hero in that culture. Write a story, okay? So you'll be writing six stories like this. Choose this one if you want to practice your storytelling skills or creative writing skills, okay? Would you like to do this challenge? Yes, no, or maybe. It's a very hard one, but if you do it, it, is, it will be extremely rewarding. You'll learn so much. 
So. So. You will be choosing two of these eight challenges, okay? You'll be choosing two of them to include in your coursework. This will come just after your job application portfolio, okay? You'll be choosing two of them and develop them in full detail and include them in your portfolio just after the uh, poster, yeah? Job application portfolio. So which ones would you like to choose? Do you have uh, any preferences? Please go over each of them again. Which ones are the most popular for you? Number one, would you like to do this one? Connecting dot storytelling, number one. Number two, secret gift, eight day. Number three, doors of Norwich. Number four, photographic treasure hunt. Number five, parallel universe. Number six, letters to self. Number seven, time travel. Number eight, fantasy adventures, six stories. Yeah. Which ones would you like to do? Please choose, write them down. Out of these eight, these are on your Blackboard, by the way. If you go to Blackboard, you'll see a PowerPoint presentation on these. Which ones would you like to choose? Please choose your two. Okay, let me go over each of them once again so that you can make your selection. Challenge one, challenge two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So, have you made your selection? Please discuss it with your friends next to you. Which ones do you choose? Just discuss, have some discussion, share. Please wrap it up. The next challenge that I want you to do is capturing inspiring innovative ideas around you. What are the inspiring innovative ideas that you have come across? Please try to remember this. For example, which beer bottles can be used as bricks since 1963? These beer bottles can be used as bricks. This is Heineken. You can see 
we can build, make buildings out of these. Or uh, here is another example that I have come across. You can repurpose toilet paper into a planting pot. Or they combine hot tub and cinema. Or here, they created this cereal. They called it Holy Crap Cereal. And sales increased 1,000%. Or they do eye-capturing design like this. Or you can uh, customize products like this one. Customizable bench. Or a restaurant in Norwich that has no menu. Or a musical. This is in London. I live at 36 Frankel Street, Swindon. I'm like Max out of space, looking after Toby, and I see everything. Past four red cups in a row, so today is a good day. find out who really killed the dog. Someone killed a dog with a fork. Jesus Christ, a garden fork. Oh. Is this train going to London? <laughs> Come on, Christopher. Touch my hand. So this is a musical that plays every evening in London. So you can go to these musicals. Uh, here's another one, Mamma Mia. It continues for... I friends. was cheated by you and I think you know when. So Years, they are playing every night in London, so don't miss them. This is another one, Korean Cafe, makes visitors feel like they stepped into a cartoon. You can do a lot of good Instagrams there. So here's your challenge. In the next two minutes or so, what are inspiring innovative ideas that you have come across? Share with your friends. What have you come across? Have you read a book that was exciting? Have you watched a movie? Have you seen a website, an app? What have you seen? What have you come across recently? Please share it with each other, with your friends. What has excited you recently? Please share it. In just two minutes, with each other. Share with each other what you have come across.
let me ask you a puzzle. Last week, there has been a historical milestone in artificial intelligence. What was that milestone? First, Google released Gemini 1.5, right? 1.5 Gemini was introduced last week. And just after three hours of that Google announcement, because there is so much competition in this AI space, OpenAI announced something new. Have you followed the news? Can anyone tell me what OpenAI has introduced? Any, anyone? OpenAI introduced something just last week. What was it? This is a historical milestone. Uh, Sora, well done. You mentioned it. Yeah. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you for following. This was a huge, sorry, sorry. This was a huge success. Sora, Sora. So, what is Sora? Let's have a look. So it gives text prompts, and then AI can generate. These are the prompts, and you can see the videos. These are all AI-generated videos. You can give prompts to AI, and then it will generate these realistic images immediately. These are all AI-generated. A Petri dish with bamboo forest, let's say. Tiny red pandas running around. You just write it and it generates the image immediately. So this is the prompt. Drone view of waves in this speech. Do you just describe it, okay? Give it, and here it is. It generates this video immediately. This is a movie thriller. Movie trailer, spaceman, wearing a red wool knitted motorcycle, vivid colors. This is the video released. Here's the next one, photorealistic close-up video of two pirate ships battling each other inside a cup of coffee. You see? AI generated this cup of coffee and pirate ships in it immediately. Snow City, Tokyo. And Sakura Petals. This is Tokyo AI generated video. Robot Life, it generated immediately. You can see the next one, fluffy monster, 3D realistic, innocence, playfulness, warm colors, dramatic lighting, cozy atmosphere. So this is the one AI generated. So you give the prompt and then it immediately generates. This is the prompt, and then it generates that video immediately. So, a cat waking, waking up its sleeping owner, demanding breakfast. So this is the video of the cat, but you see something weird happens. Like it's all not, it's not natural. Some of the images, they are not natural. Several mammoths in snow. This is the mammoth era. It generates images realistically. Lagos, Nigeria video. So yeah, you can explore more.
This is Sora. So this is a new milestone, historical milestone in AI. It has changed history forever. So artificial intelligence is making historical milestones like this every week right now. It is scary, yes, but it is there. So you have to work with these new technologies. Otherwise, you won't have a career. So let's talk about creativity. Creativity is all about combining things, connecting unrelated things together. Steve Jobs also says that. Creativity is about connecting things together, combining two unrelated ideas. If you combine unrelated things together, then you become creative. Restaurant meets airport. You see this yo sushi, you know, sushi bar. They borrowed car, bar, uh, baggage, baggage carousel system from airport. They applied it to restaurants simply. MRI scans. Children are afraid of that. So what do they do? They turn it into an adventure experience so that children won't cry. Automotive and gaming. Tesla has this as well. Boats meet houses. This is Airbnb for boats. Vacuum cleaning meets sawmill. This is Dyson. Dyson operates with sawmill principle. Eggs meet wine. Molded pop. Transport meets nature. This is the bullet train, Japan. Phone boxes converted into solar mobile phone charging points. Fashion meets navigation, crumpled maps. Cow and sofa, you combine them, get a product, a funky product. Okay. So, Bike and toilet, you get a creative product. So it is about not judging, being open to new ideas. Giraffe and shoe, combine them and you get creative. Dog and shoe, kin and shoe, pie and shoe. So you don't judge. Umbrella and shoe, origami and shoe, feet and shoe. So it's all about combining unrelated things together. I want you to combine these two things together now. Pencil and sleep. Please try to create business ideas, products, services, that combine these two things together, pencil and sleep. Let me give you an example. I uh, used this notebook as a dream diary this week. I had an amazing dream in the morning and then I immediately got my notebook next to me. I immediately wrote down my sleep, my uh, dream diary in my notebook. So this is my dream diary. So this is a product, it's a dream diary. So what else can you do in order to bring together these two concepts, pencil and sleep? Come up with products, services, ideas, write them down please. The more ideas, the better. Brainstorm, write them down. Don't judge, just generate ideas. Write them down, please. Let's do one minute open brainstorming. Brainstorm as many ideas as possible in just one minute. Don't judge your ideas. Be open. Don't care about quality. Or, you know, will it be realistic? Will it be usable? Don't care about those. Just generate ideas. Be open.
Wrap it up, please. Now, I want you to generate creative ideas together in clusters. Two or three people, share your ideas with each other, try to connect them, try to help each other. Okay, do it together. Discuss and do it together, please. Wrap it up, please. Try to wrap it up. <laughs> so here I give the same prompt to AI. You can see, create 200 business ideas by combining sleep and pencil, products, services, business ideas, Make them profitable. Explain how you can make money. Let's see. Pillow pencil holder, sleep journal, sleep consultant, pencil alarm clock, sleepwear brand, sleep pencil workshop, pencil scented candles, sleep and pencil podcast, sleep pencil art exhibition, phone case, subscription box, meditation app, yoga class, coloring book, sheets, white noise machine, masks, massage therapy, comic books, retreats, art class, collaboration, aid drink, infographic service, journal app, ASMR, accessories box, photography workshop, mindfulness, tracking device, puzzle games, subscription, e-commerce marketplace, meditation, aromatherapy, tech consultancy, wearable devices, tracking software, blog, accessories, rental, online store, retreat center, novelty gifts, mental health support, wellness apps, educational workshops, Kickstarter, photography, graphic design, app games, art therapy, blogging, courses, pet products, gadgets, corporate training, design services, book series, music festival, virtual reality, coaching, escape rooms, recipe books, stress relief, podcast. It continues on and on and on and on. And it does it so much faster than your brain. Think about the potential of AI. This is a new revolution. You need to work with these new technologies because they never get tired. I asked it to create 200. It won't stop until it generates 200. It never gets tired. You can work 24 seven. This does not require any pension. It doesn't have any rights. I can use it as my slave. If I'm the employer, I can use it 24 seven. We have trouble even creating like 10 ideas. It generates hundreds of ideas. And it does it faster, you see? It continues on and on and on and on. How will we compete with these new technologies? 
you have to use them in your career and learn how to use them in order to be employable. Otherwise, you won't have any job left. Keep this in mind. Like, if you want to be employable, you need to think like an entrepreneur. You need to know how to use these apps. You need to learn how to create value using these GPT and use it for your organization, use it for your company. Older people don't know how to use these technologies, but you can learn them much faster. If you can learn how to use these and use it to generate value, then you will be indispensable. Your organization, your company will hire you. And you can become 100 times faster, more creative, more organized. You can do whatever you wish, basically. Just use it. Okay? If you don't use it, you won't have any job. Remember that. You have to learn how to practice, use this in your job, and figure it out. OK, I'll stop here, but it will generate thousands of them. If you allow it, it will generate thousands of ideas. You can then say, create me a rap song with these two words repeating. You can ask it to create a rap song. Okay, it will create you a rap song. So it never gets tired. So create me a Black Mirror episode with pencil and sleep. Make it scary. Let's ask it to create a Black Mirror episode. And then it will create you a Black Mirror episode. Dreamcatcher, it started the story. Emma, you see, it's a Black Mirror episode. Immediately created. And it's not that bad when you think about it. Mine's canvas. So you can do this for whatever you wish, basically, as your creative assistant. So use it. Use it. So let's practice this one. You'll write a story using these words. Can you combine them in your story? Let's do this in the next uh, two minutes. Cinnamon, leather, soap, cat, pencil. How can you combine them? Can you write a story combining these?
try to wrap it up. Make it quick. If you are done, can you illustrate it? <coughs> After you are done, can you illustrate this story using some pictures or doodles or comics or storyboarding? Can you draw it? These are all exercises to encourage you to think beyond the box. You know, be generative, be creative, use your imagination. Because in this day and age, you need to be really creative, use your imagination all the time to solve problems. Okay. Let's wrap it up. If you can draw it, try to draw it. Okay, here's the next challenge. I want you to work in groups for this one. Please work in clusters of three or four, as you wish. Like, uh, you can also do this in clusters of two, if you can't work in clusters of three or four, but I want you to come together for this challenge, yeah? It'll be better if you work together. Groups of two, three, or four, you can do as you wish, come together. Find your peers, please. What you will do is, on a piece of small piece of paper, very small piece of paper, please think some products. Write down names of products, at least two products. Write them on separate small pieces of paper. You can think about some products, USB stick, lab, lamp, table, mug, uh, pen, pencil, you know, come up with products, random products. Write them on small pieces of paper. Each of you should come up with two or three product names, okay? Categories. Think about product categories. Write them on pieces of paper quickly. You'll be writing two or three different products, okay? Write at least two at least two different products. You can put any type of product, kitchen products, things that you can buy in a supermarket, technology products, anything. Okay. Everyday things that we use. And then I want you to Think about services on some other pieces of paper. Now you'll think about some services. Please try to create at least two to three services now. Cutting hair, cooking, filling taxes, collecting garbage. What else? Think about different services, write them down. Coaching. Tutoring, think about different services, cutting hair, maybe cleaning, some cleaning services. Washing up, doing the laundry, whatever. 
but come up with some services, write them down on small pieces of paper, please. Okay? And when you're done with these papers, please fold them. Products should have P on them, P. Write P when you fold them, put P. Services should have S on them. Fold them and put S's, okay? So you should have some papers with you now, with P's and S's, okay? Think of some products, some services. Write them in papers, fold them. P's should be products, S's should be services. Please prepare them now so that you are ready for this challenge, okay? I want everybody to prepare these papers, yeah? Small pieces. If you don't have any paper, borrow from your friends. Do it. If you can't think of products or services, you can also Google, use Google to generate ideas. You'll be working together, okay? In clusters of two, three, or four. Ideal number is three or four, but you can also do in two. Are you ready? Are these papers ready? Or do you need more time? Please finish this. Write them down. Let me know when you're ready. You should have some piece products folded, and you should have some services folded. Okay? Put P so that you know that it's a product. Put S so that you know that it's a service. Are you done? Now, what I want you to do is each cluster, each group, you will put all the products together in one pile. It should be a product pile. Bring together all the folded papers, products together. Mix them together. You should have a product pile. Bring together all the services as well in another pile, separate a separate pile, which will be the services pile, okay? So each cluster, you should have two piles, one product pile, one service pile. Is this clear? You should have two different piles, product pile, service pile, okay? Please prepare these piles. You should, you should have two groups of paper folded, yeah? The first one is SS. Uh, products, so, sorry, products piece. Products should be all together in folded pieces, yeah? And services should also be together in another pile. Are you ready? Now, I want you to randomly open three products. Randomly open three of the products. Randomly open them. Read them, share them with each other. Three of the products, randomly. Open them. And then you should be opening two services, randomly. Choose two of them, two services, randomly. Choose randomly, okay? Open them as well. So you should have three products and two services, okay? Open them. Open them, share with each other. You should have three products, two services. Okay? Now, your task as a group, as a group, as a cluster, together, you will be creating business ideas that combine these products and services together, okay? Try to generate dozens of ideas, as many ideas as possible. 
one of you should be the team secretary, record down all the ideas, okay? One of you should be the team secretary, record all the ideas. Discuss, brainstorm, generate as many ideas as possible, okay? Your task to generate as many ideas as possible by combining them. Combine products and services randomly, okay? Don't judge your ideas, be open, have fun, be creative. Don't reject the ideas, be open. You can create foolish ideas or crazy ideas. Don't worry about quality. The more ideas, the better. Make a list. You can combine products together. You can combine services together as you wish. Random, okay? You can combine them all randomly. The more ideas, the better. Try to maximize the number, okay? And write them down. One of you should be writing them.
how many ideas did you come up with? Is there any group who has come up with 20 or more ideas? 20. No? Not yet? 20 ideas? 15 ideas? Anyone? Any group? 15 ideas? Not yet? How many ideas do you have? Increase your numbers, please. The more ideas, the better. Anyone, any group who has 12 ideas, 12? No? Try to find more ideas, please. 11? Cool. Well done. So you are the first group who finished 11 ideas, therefore you want chocolate. Okay? Well done. So please share, enjoy. Okay. Now, I want you to choose your best ideas among all your ideas. Choose your best one. Choose your best idea. Imagine that you are presenting at Shark Tank, okay? Imagine that you are a group of entrepreneurs presenting at Shark Tank. Prepare a pitch to present at Shark Tank, okay? Your best idea, that combines some of these. Which one is your best idea? Turn it into a Shark Tank pitch, please. And do that pitch. Entrepreneurial pitch, yeah? Imagine that you are at Shark Tank, presenting this as a team of entrepreneurs, yeah? This is our business idea. Why don't you invest in us? Prepare your presentation. Come up with a brand name. Come up with a business name. Try to sell this business. Try to sell your offering, product or service. How would you present this on Shark Tank? Prepare your Shark Tank pitches, please.
Please wrap it up. Try to wrap it up. The last part of today is design thinking. I will introduce an activity on design thinking. Design thinking is used by um, Silicon Valley companies. It is the most frequently used methodology for innovation, especially technology companies, Silicon Valley companies, use a lot of design thinking. So we will have a practical workshop on design thinking you'll be practicing the cycle of design thinking, okay? Uh, at the heart of it is you will come up with solutions that are desirable, feasible, and viable. Desirability is about customers. Feasibility is about technical, technological, operational issues. Is it feasible? And viability is about economics, your costs and revenues. Is it profitable? So you are trying to find solutions that are at the center that are at the center of these three. We'll go to Silicon Valley now to explore how companies do this. We'll go to ABC News, the deep dive. It's an old program. This is on ABC News. We go to Silicon Valley. They will transform the shopping cart in just five days using design thinking. Please follow carefully because you will be applying the same methodology secret weapon for innovation. We went to IDEO, the product design folk, and said, take something old and familiar, like say the shopping cart, and completely redesign it for us in just five days. ABC News correspondent Jack Smith tells us what happened next. Nine in the morning, day one, and these people have a deadline to meet. So, welcome to the kickoff of the shopping cart project. This is Palo Alto, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley, and these are designers at IDEO, probably the most influential product development firm in the world. IDEO has designed everything from high-tech medical equipment to the 25-foot mechanical whale in the movie Free Willy and the first computer mouse for Apple. Smith ski goggles, Nike sunglasses, NEC computer screens, hundreds of products we take for granted. The point is that we're not actually experts at any given area. You know, we're kind of experts on the process of how you design stuff. So we don't care if you give us a toothbrush, a toothpaste tube, a tractor, a space shuttle, you know, a chair, it's all the same to us. We like want to figure out how to innovate in, in, by using our process applying it. Project leader is Peter Skillman, a 35-year-old Stanford engineer. Project leader because he's good with groups, not because of seniority. He's only been at IDEO for six years. The rest of the team is eclectic, but that's typical here. Whitney Mortimer, Harvard MBA. Peter Coughlin, linguist. Tom Kelly, Dave's brother, marketing expert. Jane Fulton Suri, psychologist. Alex Kazax, 26, a biology major, who's turned down medical school three times because he's having too much fun at IDEO. Safety emerges early as an important issue. 22,000 child injuries a year, which is, and so they're hospitalized injuries. I mean, there, there are many others. And theft. It turns out a lot of carts are stolen. As the team works, it becomes clear there are no titles here, no permanent assignments. And the other side says, gives us a lot of help, says, be safe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a big red ball on a, on, a, on, a, on a post, and that says you're a big guy. If you got a ball, you're a senior vice president. You know, what do I get? The desk, the red ball, it's all the same. 
in a very innovative culture, you can't have a kind of hierarchy of here's the boss and the next person down, the next person down, the next person down, because it's impossible that the boss is the one who's had the insightful experience with shopping carts. It's just not possible. The team splits into groups to find out firsthand what the people who use, make, and repair shopping carts really think. Okay, go. The problem with the plastic card is the wind catches it. So what do they do? They use ethnographic research, anthropological research. They go to supermarkets to observe how people are using the shopping cart, how shoppers are using it, how, who designs these shopping carts. They go to manufacturers of these shopping carts. They talk to people, they observe, they videotape them, they take recordings, videos of these. They do interviews to understand more about shopping carts. Yeah, and these things uh, have been clocked at 35 across the parking lot. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Man, that's actually a pretty good point. The, the trick is to find these real experts and so that you can learn much more quickly than you could by just kind of doing it in the normal way and, and trying to learn about it yourself. From everything I read, these things aren't that safe either, you know? Um, so probably the seat itself is going to have to be redesigned. One of the interesting things for me is looking at how people really don't like to let go of the cart, except for the professional shopper, whose strategy is to leave the cart at various places. 3.30 in the afternoon, and the group is back at IDEO. There is no let-up. Each team is going to demonstrate and communicate and share everything that they've learned today. A uh, shopping cart has been clocked at 35 miles an hour, traveling through a parking lot in the wind. We were in the store, what, two hours? and. And it was truly frightening just to see the kind of stuff going. So they share everything that they learn. They visualize it. They put it on posters. They share everything they learn from each other. And then they formulate lots of ideas, generative ideas, hundreds of ideas based on their learning. You got to designate some people to make damn sure that the store owner's point of view is represented. After nine straight hours, the team is tired. They call it a day. So, uh, well, uh, that's great. Thanks a lot. We had a great time today. Yeah, right. yeah. IDEO's mantra for innovation is written everywhere. One conversation at a time. Stay focused. Encourage wild ideas. Defer judgment. Build on the ideas of others. Uh, that's the hardest thing for people to do is to uh, restrain themselves from uh, uh, criticizing an idea. So if anybody starts to nail an idea, they get the bell. <laughs> the ideas pour out and are posted on the walls. Oh, the blind, the, the privacy blind. Like when you're buying six cases of condoms, you, no one sees. So if it doesn't nest, we don't have a solution. Organized chaos. It's not organized. Um, what it is, is it's focused chaos. Vote with your post-it, not, not with an idea that's cool, but with an idea that's cool and buildable. Um, if, it's, if it's too far out there and can't be built in a day, then I don't think we should vote on it. And so they start with generative thinking, lots of hundreds of ideas. They put them on the walls, yeah? But at some point, they have to make decisions. After they use generative thinking, they, uh, we call this divergent thinking. You increase the solution space. In the second phase, they use convergent thinking. That means they need to make some decisions, select some ideas, put them into action immediately. They immediately jump into action, turn them into prototypes. Okay. They have a deadline to meet. They have to be very quick. So they need to try it and see how it looks like. Enlightened trial and error succeeds over the planning of lone genius. Enlightened trial and error succeeds over the planning of the lone genius. If anything sums up IDEO's approach, that is it. Worried that the team is drifting, what can only be called a group of self-appointed adults under Dave Kelly holds an informal side session. Four or five teams. Four or five, four or five teams. And we, and we give each team a need area. It becomes very autocratic for a very short period of time in defining what things people are going to work on. If you don't work under time constraints, you, you could never get anything done because it's a messy process that can go on forever. So what do they do? They divide into four teams. Each team has a priority area. Uh, one of them focuses on technology, let's say. One of them focuses on safety, etc. They are given a priority area, and they are given one day to finish the mock-ups of shopping carts. They have to build a new shopping cart in 24 hours, four of the teams. Okay? They go out 
build it in 24 hours. Four different teams. Back at the shop, it is six o'clock, and the four mock-ups are ready for showing. Baskets also can be, if you think you will have more volume, baskets can be put in. A modular shopping cart you pile hand baskets onto. A high-tech cart that gets you through the traffic jam at checkout. That you could mount a scanner on the shopping cart so that you as the customer, as you pull it off the shelf, would scan each item. One that's built around child safety. And another that lets shoppers talk to the supermarket staff remotely. Uh, yeah, where can I find a yogurt? But the adults, again, decide more work needs to be done before the mock-ups can be combined into one last prototype. Why don't we have all the carts come up here for a second? I think you take a piece of each one of these ideas and kind of back it off a little bit and then put it in the, yeah, in the right. design. The design is still not there. But there's another motto at IDEO, fail often in order to succeed sooner. And some of the team will be up half the night trying to put together a design that finally does work. There it is! There it is! So we took the best elements out of each prototype. The cart, which is designed to cost about the same as today's carts, is different in every other way. What do you think? <laughs> Well, I, I'm very proud of the team. I think it's, it's great. This, does this work for you? Works for me great. Yeah. It's also beautiful. The cart's wheels turn 90 degrees so it can move sideways. No more lifting up the rear in a tight spot. And you shop in a totally different way. The bags are hung on hooks on the cart's frame. Remember, there is no basket here. At first, I was a little shocked, but I think it's, you have some fantastic ideas here. It needs a little refining, but I think that it's... Great. I mean, we would, we would want them. She also gave us some really good comments about how we can make this thing better. A lot of hours. Also, an open mind, a boss who demands fresh ideas be quirky and clash with his, a belief that chaos can be constructive, and teamwork. A great deal of teamwork. And these are the recipe for how innovation takes place. This is Jack Smith for Nightline in Palo Alto, California. So you can watch the long video, but what do they do? This is a summary. They empathize with the audience, with the client. They redefine the problem. They brainstorm, create lots of ideas, and then they build the prototypes, and then they test and refine, improve ideas. So this is this design thinking. They used this, I lived in Montreal, uh, but they also used it in, uh, let's go to Stockholm. Everyone is using the elevator, but nobody uses the stairs. So they use it, uh, they use design thinking to solve this problem. identification, immerse yourself in the field, redefine the problem, uh, brainstorm, build prototypes, involve stakeholders, get feedback, refine it, and implement it. So that's how you do it. 
First, you explore the problem space. Then you reduce the solution space through making some decisions, prototypes. And then you come up with those prototypes, implement it, and then uh, create those prototypes. Yeah. So now I want you to do an exercise, and we'll finish today. It will be a very short exercise. I want you to pull out your wallets, please. Take out your wallets. Your wallets out. Put them on the table. Close your eyes. No, don't close your eyes. Keep your wallet. My challenge, how do you design wallets of tomorrow? Think about that. Imagine that you are a small business, OK? Your task as a cluster, as a group, is to redesign the wallet just like they did with the shopping cart. They redesigned the shopping cart very quickly, right? Your task is to redesign this wallet. Why do we use a wallet? How do we use it? Think about form, design, function. How can we innovate this wallet? Okay? Your goal is to increase sales, to create innovation by reinventing the wallet. Okay? You'll reinvent the wallet. How do you do that? Please brainstorm, create a solution together in a cluster okay? with your cluster. You'll redesign, reinvent the wallet using design thinking. And that's the last task of today. Come up with wild ideas, draw them, discuss them. Come up with a brand name. What will be the brand name? Who are your target segments? How will you sell this? Try to sell your idea. Try to sell your wallet. What's the brand name? What's the price? How will you sell it? Try to sell it to your customers. 